Shut up and sit down. Well, hello, everybody. I'd love to welcome you to a sort of post quarter end show. I don't know. It's 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 over, but not quite over. Close enough for government work. It doesn't really feel over. Yeah, exactly. No, it's o- it's definitely over on my end, but it's just like no, it's still it's still got its, its tendrils are on me. Ugh. Get yeah, off. Exactly. It's dead, but it's on top of me. Yeah, there you go. See, That's it. there you go. <laughs> so now, once I figure out how to heave this beast off, we're gonna go ahead and kick off a wonderful episode 149 of Third Shift. I, of course, am Mr. Eric, one of your hosts, and then with me, as always, is the inglorious bastard himself, Mr. Matt. Today, oh, yeah. we've got a bunch of dinky-winky little news tidbits here for you, and we're going to get them to you so you know what is going on in the world of Gearbox and beyond. So without further ado, we go through the usual rigmarole with, hey, Mr. Matt, how was your week? This week sucked, because it was quarter-end. At work is miserable and abysmal. Every day I come home and I go, that was, I, I am the guy from office space. The, every day you see me, it's the worst day of my life because I'm at work and I come home and I just go, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> now here's, here's a story of how bad it was actually. I was listening to some, you know, some eighties like hair metal on the, on the old YouTubes and I was like, I'm going to chill out and relax to this. You know, I was really stressed out at work, went into a little hidey hole corner, put it on. And there was, <laughs> the lyrics was, Heaven isn't too far away. It's closer to you every day. And I went, you know what? He's right. I'm closer to being dead, and that's a good thing. It is a good and thing. I went, that's a really bad way of thinking, no, but that's not. how bad it's been. No, that's- it's not. <laughs> what do they say? Death is a sweet release. There you go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I literally had that thought, and I went, wait a minute. No. So, yeah, it's been horrible that- for that reason. Work sucks, but I did have my birthday over the past week. That's always fun. Took myself up to Birch Run, did some driving around, exploring eight and doing some stuff. Did the usual birthday rigmarole. Had a good two days off. And thanks to the listeners who wished me a happy birthday. I do appreciate that. Sean and Steve, you guys are awesome. Let's see. Oh, outside of work being horrendous, uh, I got into like movies again. Movies I missed out on here in 2019. Because I went to the family video and bought Blu-rays on the cheap because they're closing down. W- saw Vice, which is pretty cool. I mean, a little too political for my tastes, but still a really fun movie. Cool to see Christian Bale be that transformative actor dude. The uh, I will say the makeup effects on him and everyone else, like the aging effects, were freaking phenomenal. Like Amy, Amy Adams goes from, you know, young, like looking like Amy Adams to older like you know 60s 70s and it looks totally legit and real like i had no idea that like actual prostheses and makeup had come that far freaking amazing stuff then i saw another movie called serenity with matthew mcconaughey and anne hathaway Mm -hmm. that is oh you have seen it Uh Mm -hmm. cool yeah Yeah, i I like that that one one. oh yeah yeah i got on i got on matthew mccann matthew mcconaughey all right Whatever his name is, you know what his you name is. You got on a Matty Mac binge. <laughs> Woo-hoo. Well, yes, that's exactly what happened. I did after Interstellar. <laughs> <laughs> so I started watching like everything he was in and doing and stuff. Mm. Yeah, I ended up catching all that. Good cool, stuff. Cool. Yeah, I enjoyed that one. And then on the video game front, I've been playing Judgment, the latest game from the Yakuza guys. Having a lot of fun with that. If you want to know more about that, I talk about that a lot more on What You Play in Third Shift, our $3 Patreon bonus Which, for the month of June. I'm just going to jump in and say it was really good this time around, all right? So mm-hmm. you're missing out if you ain't paying that $3 because it was a good episode and I had a great time. Oh, yeah. It was, it actually was a really good episode because okay, I won't spoil it. Everybody should go check it out. And you'll hear more about the Patreon later in the episode if you're interested. But I think that pretty much wraps it up for me and this week. What about you, Eric? How was your week? Well, like you said, it was quarter end, and it was fantastic. You know what? Sometimes when you put leeches on your body and they drain all of your life force and mana, <laughs> you feel regenerated and rejuvenated, right? That's how this works. <laughs> You're sitting there as a drained husk going, <laughs> yeah, I feel this better. feels good. <laughs> Through death, rebirth can happen. You know what I'm saying? You're like a phoenix. Yes. Yeah. I am rising again, young and beautiful, from the ashes. 
<laughs> Neither of us are either of those things. Oh, there. come, come on. on. Well, you know, I was trying to be chipper, but yes, it was quarter and it was miserable. <laughs> Unlike Matt, I was not smart, nor did I have the days to do it. I did not have a mini fake weekend. I just mm. have worked for a long time. In fact, I honestly don't know what day it is. Yep. Uh, because I'm completely confused, but that's okay. Because as I said in the uh, start of this, it is over, and I'm going to roll this freaking dead body off of me, and I'm going to get up, and I'm going to have some fun. But unfortunately, because of it being quarter and week, I did a lot of nothing. Uh, mm-hmm. I survived, and I lived, and I feel, and you know, this is where I know something's wrong with me, is I feel like I did something, but I don't remember mm-hmm. anything. I don't remember anything about this week <laughs> or last week. I just remember that it happened. Yeah, my my this week segment, I had to sit down for like two minutes and go, when was that? Was my birthday before the show or after the show? It was it was it was after. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, birthday time. <laughs> Did I watch movies? Okay, yeah, movies. Okay, okay. I'd say the only thing of note that I did do was I went to a little uh, Asian cuisine restaurant, a little Chinese restaurant around here called Apple Jade, and I've never mm-hmm. been there myself. So I went with a bunch of friends and family for a little uh, celebration, and it was delicious. I had a great time, lots of food to go around. Everybody ate like kings and queens, et cetera, et cetera. And, of course, you know, hung out with family and whatnot and Mm. Listen to them talk politics and stuff and giggled and laughed at the different uh, v- views and opinions that were going around, as I oh always boy. do. Oh, yeah. A little bit of religion tied in. All the, all the, all the typical <laughs> your good your family things, they all happen. Mm-hmm. But I find it humorous instead of getting agitated or upset by it. So I always just laugh and have fun with it and come up with mm-hmm. weird cockamimi like scenarios to make them start talking even crazier and do weird things. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the problem is one of them, he, he knows me too well. Mm-hmm. So he, he's caught on you know, over the years to what I'm doing. So he knows when mm-hmm. I'm just prodding and screwing with him. So, so he doesn't take the bait. He's just, Oh, you know, he'll take whatever. it, but he'll, he'll spin it in something silly just cause he knows that I'm, I'm fishing for some goofy remarks, so he gotcha. he plays along instead of actually being duped into being ridiculous. So I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, dang it, dang it, <laughs> must be more clever, more clever. <laughs> uh, game wise, I've played a little bit of Persona Four Golden. I've really dabbled all over, bit of a little bit of rage, a little bit of everything, a little bit of uh, yeah, a little bit of something. <laughs> I can't. I'm not. Well, gonna... I, well, I know what you've been playing because we talked about no, it on which plan. I'm third not shift. saying nothing. You don't know if that's what I've been playing, Matt. If you want to know what I'm talking about or not talking about, you're gonna have to go check out what you play at third shift because I'm not mentioning whether or not something happened. So ha. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're telling me is one of the things you said you were going to give up, you didn't give up, or the thing you gave up before you are back on now. Yeah, but that was last year's, so we're good. Okay. It doesn't apply this year, because I didn't say I was getting quitting it for good this year. No, oh, yeah, yeah. I that know, was I last know. year's, and I did, which... So now I know what which, you're talking about. <laughs> I log in, and I'm like, uh-huh. oh my God, what is that? What is it? What is even happening? What is going on? <laughs> so apparently when you spend about a year away from something, you come back and you're like, oh, I don't, have, totally I don't have a clue what is going on right now. I have not an idea. Now, in my defense, too, I'm not sticking around. I just wanted to do the, the new patch. So I'm just going to do the, you know, the new stuff and then move on. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. But with that being said, I am sorry that my week was so tedious and uneventful, but I hope you all will bear with us in the future on non-quarter end times, and we will have a good time. But with that being said, we've got more to talk about, so let's get the heck into it. Let's get back into it by saying coming up next week on Tuesday will be IG2G episode 57. Going to have all kinds of good times, as we always do. And you know what other kinds of good times we always have. You know it. You ready for it? What? You ready? Get your, what? Get, get, your, get your golden key pants on, because we got shift codes for golden keys in Borderlands, the pre-sequel, and Borderlands Game of the Year edition. So hit up the Twitter, the Reddit, the forums, the Instagram, hit up your preferred shift code provider, and get yourself some free loot. 
I'm going to tell you what right now. You need them freaking golden keys. And, you know, you need to go to Guardian Con because I have been seeing individuals showing these bad man pajama golden keys that they mm-hmm. handcrafted. And they're taken with them there to hand out in little events and little find me things and such. Mm-hmm. So get on over to Guardian Con if you can. If it's not already sold out and booked up, I'm not quite sure. My wife mm-hmm. doesn't let me go to these things, so I don't even pay attention to it. But if you can, right. you might find yourself some golden keys in real life and not just in the game. And another place you can find golden keys in real life. This is an awesome segue. Thank you for the setup. Is at numskull.com, N U M skull.com. They released all kinds of Borderlands 3 merchandise they're going to be having there. They're going to have figures, pins, plushies, ducks, all kinds of crazy stuff. But the first one I'm going to point out that is the direct segue they have a golden key key ring. So you can have a golden key with your actual keys. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, I saw that. Fa- that was the man. face I made when I saw it. I went, oh. and I think it's only like seven or eight bucks. Something like that. It's not over ten. Okay. And I went. I have to get it. I need that. I gotta get it. I need that yeah. in my life. Yeah, that's a must-have. So I can waggle mm. it in front of the show all the time. And just oh, have yeah. a golden key with me and help make. It just makes me feel so good. Just makes me feel. Good. I need to get two of them. So when it's golden key time for my favorite part of the show, I can just jingle them Ooh, right here next to the mic and go. Exactly. That'd be awesome. Oh man. Some but I will say they have all kinds of other awesome stuff too. They got a Vault Hunter symbol keychain. They got a Moxie bar set, which is, you know, four shot glasses, I think a bottle opener, and something else too. But it comes in a box that looks like Moxie's bar. Now I don't know if it's like just the box or if it's a set behind it, but it's got like the 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 big whiskey barrels and it looks like they made Moxie's bar as the backstop holder for these four shot awesome. glasses that say, you know, they got Moxie's logo on uh-huh. them there. They've also got a psycho heat changing mug, so it's got the psycho mask on it. When you put hot liquids in it, all the roses for the Borderlands Three stuff show up all around it. Nice. I think I think the one I'm definitely gonna get is they got a little psycho mask bottle opener, just like the little, and then it also is a magnet to stick on your fridge. So you just have a little psycho head sticking out of your fridge all the time. Perfect for you because when your daughters draw something and you put it on the fridge, oh look, that's not daddy anymore. Boop, now it's Psycho. That's not Santa Claus. Boop, it's Psycho. That would be awesome. I would like that. Isabel does not exist. Put, <laughs> put the Psycho on her head. Why am I always a Psycho, Daddy? Here's how it is. <laughs> you get two of them. When your daughters are being bad, he's like, oh, who's being bad today? Isabel, you're a Psycho today. No, Daddy, no, don't put me in the box. <laughs> oh, psycho's go in the box, daughter. <laughs> Yes, that won't have any kind of lasting effects. I want them to <laughs> like these games someday, <laughs> not, not fear them. I don't want to play that. But I will say, numskull.com, it had a whole line of cool stuff. So if you're interested in Borderlands 3 at all, which you are if you're listening to this podcast, hit them up. They got all kinds of stuff. Like I said, full-on figures, goofy figures, plushies, all kinds of great things. Anything you could possibly want that's not on GearboxLoot.com, hit up numskull.com. They got the hookup for you. And while you're online hitting up that numbskull, getting you some sweet Borderlands Lou, you might want to go over to the Twitter and check out Gearbox Official because not only can you buy sweet loot, but they just released the schematics for cosplaying in all these sweet characters and places and things and all that good stuff. So if you're looking Mm -hmm. to go cosplay as one of these awesome characters, get over there because they've got everything you need to know to make some bad Mamma Jamma costumes. And I would encourage you to make one for me. And I will wear it. I don't even care what it is. Doesn't matter. Just wear Moxie it. Moxie costume for Eric. Oh there it goes. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So you said that was a cool thing from Gearbox Official on Twitter. Something else that happened from Gearbox Official on Twitch. They had another episode of the Co-op Couch, and I missed ninety-five percent of it because this was the day that I was traveling all around doing good stuff for my birthday. But it was Elisa and another person from Gearbox. Again, sorry, I missed it. They were playing Risk of Rain 2, the Scorched Acres update. I watched a little bit of it. It looked a little still kind of floaty, like a little weird, like the the initial impressions were. But they were having tons of fun. If you want to check that out some more, hit up twitch.tv slash gearboxofficial. One thing that I will point out from this was as they were closing out the show, you can tell I caught this bit because, like I said, I missed most of it. Elisa was saying, hey, we're going to try and make this a weekly thing. So hopefully they'll be 
broadcasting live every Thursday like they have been. I mean, Thursday's been their day, you know what I mean. Hopefully they'll be on there every Thursday with more and more people from Gearbox talking about good stuff, having good times, having you talk to them, asking them questions. Because that's the coolest part about this. It's not a whole bunch of people, so when questions appear in the chat, they go straight to them. They get answers or jokes or whatever back and forth. It's a good time. Yeah, I'm I'm feeling starting to feel pretty crappy because I've missed these last two, and I just I, I'm not getting the notifications. Things are, I don't know what the heck is going on here because typically technology is hard. Well, no, I get the notifications for every freaking other individual I follow, but well, I'm not I, I getting mean, gearboxes. So no, I'm I'm serious. I'm saying oh, okay. technology is weird sometimes. I'm just like I'm serious. <laughs> I have them on notifications. Yes, of course, and mm. I never get them. So I don't know when they're live. Otherwise, I would tune in and check it out because a lot mm. of times when they go live i'm just dinking around at work you know doing a little yeah. bit of this a little bit of that i could pop it up on the phone and listen and look in every once in a while while i'm processing stuff so it's mm -hmm. it's kind of a bummer now i'm gonna go ahead and make sure i watch the uh the video you know after the fact now but it doesn't mm -hmm. save me right now so pff, sucks but a video-related thing that man. does not suck was the Pandora <laughs> Planetary Profile that they put up. little video just a couple days ago, and I hope they do this with all the planets for Borderlands 3, or at least the lion's share of them. It was Claptrap and Steve, the psycho, talking about, hey, what's about Pandora? What are these What are these creatures that we have? And there were actually, there was actually one that was totally new, that, that, like, uh, that trash eater or trash devourer mm -hmm. one. That was a new one. So I would like to see more wildlife more planets maybe a little bit more in depth because it was just like funny goof around times but i enjoyed it well i had a great time with it and i just like the redesign on the creatures they're like sw mm -hmm. slightly just twinged and changed a little bit and yeah. the way and i don't know if this is all just if it's gonna feel that way in game or if that was just part of the video but first off video hilarious secondly mm -hmm. when steve shot the wreck and it fell in front of claptrap there like that mm -hmm. animation and how that looked was freaking oh, yeah. awesome. So, mm -hmm. you know, if that's something that's in-game and it kind of has that nice thwack and just that feel about it when it lands and hits the ground, them little mm -hmm. details are outstanding. So I'm hoping that's that's part of it. Even if it's not, it's going to be something close, I'm sure, because Gearbox mm -hmm. has really been going all out with this. But Claptrap had me rolling. I liked, I liked the performance there. And, of course, I'm yeah. going to say that because I'm, you know, I'm just I'm jaded because, you know, there's... I'm not jaded. I'm uh, missing the word. What's the word? Well, where are you trying to say? You know, I got well. You know, Jim Frone is you know a good guy, buddy. So you're biased. 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 Jeez, oh, Pete, why, God? You know what? I'm a blame quarter, and it's fine. It's fine. So That's I'm it. biased, everybody, because Jim Frone is freaking fantastic. He's come on the show before. We love him a lot, and he is, of course, the voice for Claptrap. And I think he's nailing it and knocking it out of the park. I love this version of Claptrap. He's just a, mm -hmm. just a little asshole, to be frank. It's awesome. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I will say I love it, too, and especially since we had Jim on the show, and I know his voice, and you know I have like a feel for what he sounds like. You can feel him in there. Like you can hear his tones and his intonations in there, and maybe it's just me because I listened. To, you know, I used to listen to a lot of languages and stuff. But it's it's so cool to be like, here's a voice that you know some people say they can't tell the difference, but I can because I know Jim and we know Jim and he's our buddy. It's I don't know, it's super cool. I like it. Yes, very good. I can't wait to see part two, part three, however many parts they're going to end up doing. I imagine however many plants are, that's how many they're going to do. So there you go. Mm -hmm. I am looking forward to it immensely. So that was a fun, quick little video, but hey, I got a quick bit of news for you and a quick sale going on. We don't know how long it's last. It's just going to be limited time only. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, a game that Gearbox Publishing took part in a ways back was Burnstar, all right? And if you don't know what this is, I will briefly, briefly let you know. You control one of four characters, whom are Burnstar, Ember, Cold Snap, and Toxo. Each one of them has their own abilities. It's much like Bomberman Overheaded. Uh, view, you go in a bunch of little s puzzles, things to solve, you use the abilities to solve said puzzles, and then you move on to the next level. Very fun, very quick, very clever. It does require some brains, so if you don't have those, don't get this. But <laughs> if you do, for 99 cents, you can pick this title up. And that's on the mm. Switch, everybody. And let me tell you right now, it was like 14.99 or 19.99 or something on the Switch. So 99 mm. cents, 
you can you can literally go find 99 cents and i own it and i have played it a whole bunch and i will tell you that it is worth 99 cents this is one of those titles that i'm on the toilet or if i just got like 10 minutes before i'm supposed to go get the girls or something (laughs) i go in and i do a match and then i close the nintendo switch back up and i roll out quick simple Mm -hmm. numerous oil changes i've gone and played through you know a couple levels (laughs) this is that perfect game Mm -hmm. this is that so for 99 cents, it is well worth having on the Switch for those particular moments, and I would recommend you grab it. Yeah, absolutely. I've, I've only played a little bit of it myself. You know, the the time you let me borrow your your Switch to play it, I will say 100%. It's definitely it's worth way more than 99 cents. So getting anything on a cheap like that is a steal, and this is definitely one of those steals. You should, you should definitely pick it up. And speaking of steals, I wish I could steal me some tickets to Guardian Con. You know what I'm saying, Matt? Nice. Because yeah. Gearbox is going to be over there, and they've got a plan of action in motion for this thing. They've promised that they're going to be showing some cool stuff there and having some events ha- taking place. And they went ahead and kind of uh, opened up on what they're going to be doing, at least some of what they're going to be doing, in a mm-hmm. recent post. Catch Borderlands 3 at Guardian Con, posted July 3rd, 2019. Whether you're attending in person or tuning in from home, the Borderlands 3 panels at this year's Guardian Con are not to be missed. Guardian Con is an annual event that encourages like-hearted gamers to come together and make the world a better place by raising money for St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. Guardian Con 2019 will take place in Orlando, Florida on July 5th and 6th, and we're excited to confirm not only that a Borderlands 3 demo featuring Volt Hunters, Amara, Maz, and Zane will be playable for attendees but also that we have some great stuff planned for both of our panels. So did you hear that, everybody? Woo! You get gameplay for three wonderful characters. Oh, man, mm. usually it's only like one at a time, but now all three. Now what I'm hoping for is because it says if you're there in person or tuning in at home, that these panels will be streamed on Gearbox Official or on some kind of Guardian Con Twitch stream because... How can I tune in from home if you're not broadcasting it? That's got to mean they're broadcasting it, right? Yes, they will be on Twitch, and I'm pretty sure you'll probably be able to catch it on the Gearbox official. If not, uh, check out Professor Broman's Twitch or King oh, Gathalian, yeah, yeah, yeah. because those are the two that are going to be there helping to showcase some of this stuff. And of course, since they host this event, I would imagine that their streams will be live with all the goodies and things going on, in which case you'll be able to participate and have fun with. You make a totally valid point because I know the second panel, it's Killer6 and another individual I'm not sure about. So the way that Gearbox has been open with everybody streaming all their stuff, I guarantee you're going to find them on these people's channels at the very bare minimum. But they're going to have the, what would be the opposite of the bare minimum, the bare maximum available for you. But it is for sure also, just so you know, going to be on the GuardianCon Twitch channel. So you cool. can check it out those other places, I'm sure, but you can also check it out officially at the Guardian Con Twitch channel. So there's probably going to be several ways to check this out. You're not going to want to miss it because Borlands, Gearbox, they've been really hot lately, rocking out all this cool mm. stuff. And if we can catch maybe some new scenarios, new areas while they're playing through these characters, oh, yeah. we'll be able to pick it apart and find out what's new, what we haven't seen, all that good stuff. And what I'm really hoping now that we're now that I'm thinking about it some more, even if they're in just that demo area from the first, you know, reveal event, you're gonna have Moe's available. So you're gonna hear Moses voice lines and see how Moe's interacts with everyone else and the you know, those voice prompts when it's like, Hey, who are you? Oh, you're bringing a bunch of soldiers here? Blah it's just me and my mech, or whatever Moe's will say. Mm. I want to I want to see more of that. I've said it before. I wanna see more and more and more Vault Hunters interacting with everybody in the world and then with them. Give me that. And That'd be cool. He, it would be cool. And you know what? I want to read this last little part two verbatim so that way there's no confusion. All right. For those of us not making the trip, <clears throat> if you're not making the trip to Orlando, you can watch live broadcasts of these panels on the Guardian Con Twitch channel. If you're attending Guardian Con, your optional missions to catch these panels live both reach their exciting conclusions at the Rare Drop stage. So there you go. will be at the Rare Drop stage. Hmm. You might also be interested to know that you'll receive a unique Volt Insider program diamond code worth 500 points just for playing the borderlands 3 demo which you were going to do anyway right Mm -hmm. bam so anybody that gets to go gets to actually of course play the demo and get 500 points for the program (sighs) jealous it's a good deal it's a good deal man just just leave the wife and kids at home just drive just drive the truck and truck and drive down to orlando just do the classic, oh, I'm going to go get some cigarettes, babe. Yep. Leave the wife and kids, but only for like a week. Yeah. 
And you come back and be like, hey, look, oh, I got really lost. Yeah. I was I, confused. I fell in the ditch, you know. Passed out a bear, picked me up, took me back to its cave, thought I was its mother. You know, mm. I had to care for it for like five days before I could get away. There you go. That's it. Yeah, it's perfect. perfect I believe, I believe, you believe it right it? now. I know you I'm everyone that watches should believe it. I mean, that's that could happen to me. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> that's, that's a fact. <laughs> Uh, well, you know, King of Thalion, he's a good friend of mine. I'm sure he's going to throw me some tickets, me and the family. And we're oh, yeah, be absolutely. Up there, yeah. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. So we'll be watching that from home. And another thing you can watch from home right now, it's live on YouTube, is the making of Borderlands 3 that was put together by somebody who goes by the name of Mr. Raffle Waffles. On Twitter, he's at Mr. Raffle Waffles, and he's Mr. Raffle Waffles on the YouTubes. But this was a pretty cool behind-the-scenes interviews with a lot of developer people. Well, I guess I shouldn't say a lot. There were like three or four, but the main big chunk of this is Randy Varnell, and he's in full-on Randy Varnell mode, talking all about the development of Borderlands 3, mindset behind a lot of things, you know, theming and tone, you know, a lot of stuff that we've heard about from that reveal event, but it's always good to see Randy V go off and go nuts and just in full on just hyper hyper spazzing out. I'm excited about what I'm doing because it's so cool kind of mode. A uh, bunch of takeaways from this for me. He specifically, I think they've mentioned it before, but he specifically went in a little more in depth on the themes of the game and how family is one of the big themes this time around. And he said all kinds of different types of family, like family that you have, but you don't want family that you want, but you don't have family that you weren't expecting, like people drawn together who, you know, were maybe on opposite sides or stuff like that. So with what they've already said about bringing heavier or darker themes into Borderlands 3, I'm excited to see what they can do with big concepts like that, like, you know, drawing people together, ripping people apart, family conflict, that kind of stuff. And that's exactly what I found interesting too. And you can definitely see one part of that with uh, Tiny Tina, Mordecai, and Brick. That's like the family mm. that's not your family, but that became family sort of deal. You know, that's yep, definitely yep. Gonna, you're going to see that probably become a big thing. But what I'm really hoping is for a pre sequel event in this where your actual Vault Hunter characters that you're playing get involved in the story mm. and become part of the story in some way, yeah. you know, engaging in, like you said, maybe family you don't want or family that becomes family. I want to be more involved and I hope that our Vault Hunters have a lot to say. And I believe. Mm -hmm. That that's been said that they do this time around, but I'm not 100% on that or to what degree. So it's something, actually, I should really research that and find out. Because I could have swore Randy uh, Pitchford at one point said that they will have more interaction than previously. But I, I want to say there's some stipulation, though, that it wasn't like as it wasn't full blown. Like it's not going to be there. They're just talking away, going to town or nothing. Yeah, I'm I'm about 95% sure that they have said that, that it's going to be more like at least the pre-sequel mm -hmm. level of interaction with stuff. But what I've seen so far from that gameplay demo, it's been a lot of, hey, Vault Hunter, what are you, blah, blah, blah. And then just pause for a voice clip and then somewhat related response, but not directly about, you know, the thing they specifically yeah. said. So I'm ho like I said before, I'm hoping to see more of that and see that fleshed out because... That would be awesome to, you know, especially if you're going to different planets. This just brainstorm sparking in my brain right now. If you go to different planets and this group likes Moe's a lot, maybe you get special interactions when you play as Moe's over here. Maybe they reference something you did in the past, something you're about to do in the future. And if you go over to here where maybe they're not as friendly with Moe's or they don't have any idea who she is, Maybe you have quote fingers, totally different interactions with them where her voice lines are, who are you and blah, blah, blah versus Amara who knows these people really well. That'd be awesome. It would be. And I really hope they have considered that and are going to do something like that. Only time will tell. Or of course, when we see it at uh, more of these cons and events, et cetera, maybe it'll kind of give us a better picture of what's going on there. But I, I'm definitely interested in overall story and I just hope we're involved more because it's great. And the story is fantastic, but like you said, it always does feel a little disjointed, you know, when when you're not in it. You're just like, oh, I'm observing mm -hmm. the story, and then you're just this random character, just, oh, okay, cool. Well, this documentary may have even more good news on that front, because Randy V again went on to say, you know, they had like two head writers for Borderlands 2, which was Anthony Birch, and... 
Battleborn, which was, I'm blanking on the name, I'm really sorry, guy. But he said, you know, there were only like two big writers on those, other than people who did the lore and the backstory stuff. But he said for Borderlands 3, they've put together a full narrative team. And so he went into a lot of the specifics of, you know, how these people get together, work with each other, even, you know, here's the main story team, and then branching out into the different planets, and how they all come together to spitball their ideas around and you know try to work with you know what you did on this planet how they can reference it on the next one maybe stuff that you've done in the past or you know even stuff from older borderlands games so i'm hoping with this big collaborative effort which is something we've been talking about a lot with borderlands 3 maybe that'll flesh that out a little bit more too even if it's just you know if it's just referencing what you did on planet a on planet b c and d that would feel a lot more Organic, yeah. real. Yeah, it would feel a lot more organic in Borderlands 3 than 2 or the pre-sequel did. Because like when you did side missions, nobody talked oh, about yeah, them ever. unless it was unless it was step 2 of the side mission. Uh-huh. So I'd like to see a lot more of that. Well, and then you mentioned Battleborn, and I thought about that just for a second. I went, wait a minute. You know, the, a lot of these individuals that were working on Battleborn are, of course, working on Borderlands 3. And something they did right and amazing in Battleborn was the whole story. And when you're in those missions, you were in it. You were part of it. You were included in mm-hmm. the mission. So I always felt like, hey, I am here as Wrath or I am here as Phoebe, et cetera, et cetera. Sure. Where, so hopefully they took some of that and they put it into Borderlands 3 so you feel like you're actually there and part of it, not just a disjointed character. Because even though a lot of the Battleborn stuff was drop-in lines from your characters, it it was that a lot of the way through the mission. Mm-hmm. So even if you're just doing a story mission and it's, instead of it just being Lilith saying, go get him, killer. If at least Moses going, hey, I'm already on it. What do you think I'm doing? Or Amara going, Oh, Roger, you know, yeah. whoever going, Roger that just keeping that voice there to make it feel like you are the character and getting a feel for why they're responding the way they do that. You know, perfect. That's mm-hmm. it right there. So hopefully that happened. We're going to find out obviously really, really soon. Well, hopefully that's the case. Now I'm excited. Yeah. Dang it. I was already excited. Hey. Now I'm more excited. I was going to say, hey, get more excited because he also talked about our buddy Dante Silva who works in the – he, he was, basically made him the lore master for this game, collecting all the Borderlands lore, shifting it all out. But he said a couple cool things lore-related is now you can – once you get an echo log, instead of finding it out in the dirt again if you wanted to listen to it, they go into your menu. You can replay them all you want to learn the lore. And then he teased but didn't reveal anything about it. He said, hey, there might be a really, like, a kind of specific lore challenge instead of just combat challenges or exploration challenges. And what that put, what that put in my head was Grandma Flexington giving you a big old story or asking you, like, Grandma Flexington's Borderlands quiz. Who knows? I don't even know. But if there's something uniquely cool like that that's totally different from combat and stuff i love those breaks in the action new ways of doing stuff it made it made my brain just go down a just go down a rabbit well when hole. you first said that the instantly what i just thought of was you got to collect them all to get a trophy but then you started talking mm-hmm. more and i went oh matt's going more in depth here like there like there could be like mm-hmm. some really cool lore challenge where like you said a character is going to be like hey come here i got a quest for you hey answer this or do that and da 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 and maybe mm-hmm. maybe for being able and this would be really cool Maybe if you're able to take all this lore you've learned through, you know, watching these echoes, etc., and you finish this thing and answer it correctly or something, you get like this super rare gun or something or, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. Just something really cool and rare so that way whenever you have it, everybody, of course, knows you did the cool, crazy lore challenge. Which, mm-hmm. as I said that, sounded really amazing. But then I realized it's, you know, we're living in today's day and age where the internet exists. So the second one individual figures it all out and gets it, you can just go cheat and go do it all without actually learning the lore and paying attention whatsoever. Yeah, and that basically ruins my idea too, which while you were talking about it, I was thinking maybe, you know, there's there's echoes maybe teaching you about a certain character in the world, or maybe you have side conversations with other characters. You learn about the, the doll general that's here on this planet. And maybe there's a side mission where you can sneak into the base, but you have to know the information from either those characters or those echo logs. And you get like, you know, I think, well, grandma Flexington had a choice, you know, an on screen button prompt mm-hmm. choice, 
maybe you got to talk to that guard, sneak your way in. Now you can do doll missions. That would be amazing. And just a little bonus, not a big storyline thing. You know, maybe you don't get the best gun in the game, but another little bloop. X, you know, section of the map where you can do side missions because you paid attention. And knew something. Exactly. Which puts you also more into the story because you actually had to listen mm-hmm. to these individuals talk and get what they were saying and then go ask. And then another person goes, hey, those guys were just talking about this. What'd they say? You remember? And you're like, oh, I remember. And, and instead of being that canned answer of just your character just goes, yeah, he's the guy with the eye patch. Mm-hmm. You have to pick you it pick out it. yourself. Yeah. And then if not, guess what? Run back and go pay attention or go cheat and get on the internet, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Because honestly, the internet sometimes. just, it's there. It, you, all this is really sweet and it does, shouldn't deter anybody from putting cool shit like that in the game. But to yeah. be realistic, of course, the internet's there and a lot of people will just go, <laughs> Borderland 3 walkthrough thing, blah, and then just pull up mm. everything because that's you know what people do. Unfortunate, but won't detract us oh, from man. being drunk and playing and doing it the right way because that's and, how we roll. And forgetting yes, everything and anyway. it will be great. <laughs> right, remember, uh, he said the green-eyed man with the, with the funny face. <laughs> and instead of hitting, instead of pressing the button for green, you can press the green button, which is triangle, which would be for yeah. red. What are you doing? No! Come on! I said green! I pressed green, I man. I mean, remember in Borderlands 2, how many times did we drunkenly shoot the wrong person? Even though we knew <laughs> what we should have done. <laughs> <laughs> A multitude oh, of times. It's just so silly. <laughs> That's what makes it fun. And it, I remember those events, you know, and a lot more of that mm. and even more complicated and or in, inclusive stuff would be awesome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I, I will say one last takeaway specifically for me, dialing back to the narrative team, Randy V was talking about how they get together, they do table reads, they, they pick apart each other's stuff, like I said. He also said, we, we brought in focus groups, people who did game, people who didn't game, you know, got an idea, sent them through these quests, got an idea what they were doing, and then hit them up with questions afterwards. Do you remember this? Do you remember that? What do you think of this? What do you think of that? And as soon as I heard the words focus groups, what do you get from focus groups? You get user research. My user research team, I can't wait to hear about them, see some damn reports. Where did those people go? They disappeared. User research team, come back. Tell me what you got on Borderlands 3. I got to hear from it you. It is crazy, right? They were so big for a while, rocking out, going nuts, and then they mm-hmm. went, Phew. gone, everything gone. Well, what happened? Where'd y'all go? And, and it was right before, well, not right before, but it was a little bit before the whole big Gearbox publishing announcement of all the stuff they're going to be popping out this year. Where's my research team? Where's my Gearbox publishing dev blog? Exactly. Oh my god. They kind of went they went silent. They went radio silent on us. We don't you know, we don't like that. Come on back, Gearbox Publishing. We know you're up to something. Mm. Let us know. Keep us up to date. I know you're researching those users. Yeah. Give me the stats. Right. Show me the maps and the graphs and the we, things. We yes. Show it. me the pie charts. Yes. I want all the pie charts, Matt. I want all the pie too. <laughs> <laughs> I think that pretty much wraps up the making of Borderlands 3 for me. I definitely recommend everybody go watch that just because it's, I've I've said it before, it's Randy V being excited, making you excited. His enthusiasm is so infectious and his love for what he does. And then you get some behind the scenes stuff on top of that. So go check it out. Mr. Raffle Waffles, check him out on the Twitter or the YouTubes. You'll find links to it. And go check it out. It's a good time. Indeed it is. And with that, man, I think we've pretty much cruised through all of our news for the day, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, yeah. So we did it. Hurrah. Jose, huzzah. There is one last piece, but I'm going to just tease it because I don't know if I can actually say anything about it. Oh, yeah, that's so right. That's right. let us just say, once I do a little dig in and make sure everything's good to go, we might have a little cool, fun thing to talk about next week here on Third Shift. And I look forward to doing it if I can do it because I had quite a bit of fun doing it. Or did I? Yeah, because we might have to we might have to debate this topic. You versus me, one versus one. Maybe. We'll go at it. One v one. Next week on third shift. Stay tuned. 
But until that time, send us any feedback, any comments, any questions, any concerns, anything else you'd like to hear us talk about on the show, send that to us via email at info at thirdshift.me, tweet it at us at thirdshiftme, or find us on Facebook under Third Shift. Indeed you can. You can also find us over at that wonderful Patreon where if you like what you hear, you can probably maybe give us a buck or two bucks or five bucks or a thousand bucks or that coveted one million dollars that so many of our listeners hope that somebody will throw us that because they really want to see us quit our jobs, open a food lion, make a sh- make a whole aisle full of babies in jars, have Danny running around in a mascot suit, and doing our own thing in our own business. Please, God, give us those million dollars. I don't, Please, you know, you say this, Matt, but I, I'm telling you, it's not as easy as it looks. <laughs> it might not be so easy for us. <laughs> You know what? I'll take a new challenge working with my friends over anything else there is right now. I agree. I agree. So you know what? If you got an extra million bucks and you like what you hear, consider throwing it our way and you get not only get our show still, but you'll also get our antics and shenanigans as we run and operate a wonderful food line. It's a win-win for everyone involved. That's right. (laughs) (laughs) But especially for us. For us the most. For us the most. I won't lie. (laughs) <laughs> but if you cannot throw us any monetary wonderfulness, I understand. You got to pay bills. You got to do what you got to do. However, there are so many other ways you can help us by giving us five star ratings on the iTunes and other podcast thingy, bajiggies, good reviews, fun reviews, even critical reviews if you think that's necessary. Although, man, I say we do a pretty darn good job for what we are. So, you know, if you got some nasty nasties to say, how about you keep them to yourself or maybe go. I don't know. Either way. <laughs> You can also give us mailbag questions, interact with us on the Twitter, or any other fun thing. <laughs> and hey, you mentioned the mailbag. We forgot the we mailbag got, the last like three a weeks. Mailbag question we've been ignoring. Oh, terrible. Terrible humans. Sorry, Howard. We'll we'll get your mailbag question next week, brother. I promise. And next week's episode will drop on the 12th of July. You can find that episode on iTunes, on Stitcher, on Podbean, on Spotify, and on YouTube. And as I always say, if you like what we're doing, you'd like to help us out, please give us a like, a rating, review, comment, a subscription, any kind of good thing on any one of those good services, because it does help us out. And we really do appreciate it. Indeed, we do appreciate it so very much, those five stars. Gosh, bless you know, Matt said it before. I'm wasting away. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm misspeaking. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm starting to get real hungry. I'm telling my people that listen to this to. It's not good. I need a five star. I'm gonna start eating. I'm gonna start eating the people I love. <laughs> so get us a five. And you wonder why we never come over, Eric? <laughs> hey, Matt, we're making tacos. Goes. You want to come over? Hey, buddy, I'm going to have a big fire in the back. Why don't you just meet <laughs> yeah, me just out back, back there? Drink a lot of beers. It'll be a great time. I don't think so, ma'am. i got a, got a doctor's <laughs> yeah, appointment gonna, that week. Totally you know? pass. That seems real strange. Oh, man. <laughs> but anyways, yes, indeed. Those five stars are wonderful. It does help. I know it's a bunch of bahooli and everybody always says that, but it really actually does. We see it in metrics mm-hmm. where we are, blah, 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 all that yakety schmackety. So take a moment of your time out of your wonderful, busy, constructive life and give us a five-star rating because it might help our dream come true. And if my dream comes true, you know what I'll do? I might help somebody else's dream come true. And until that happens, I'm going to take one moment out of my glorious day to just say, Don't don't forget to forget to say. Sit down.